Hi, I'm Richard Sanchez, and in this demonstration of the EDL importer, I'm going to show you how you can use the EDL importer to cut in shots. Now, there's two different methods of doing this. One is more accurate than the other, but both of them will speed up cutting in shots, especially when you get in large batches, because you always seem to get those really large batches late at night when you're trying to get out of work. So I'm going to show you how you can get out of work a little earlier. You're going to see here we have two bins. We have incoming and incoming two. So I have the sequence here where I have a shot for just about every shot in the timeline. I purposely do not have shots for these first eight or nine, and that's on purpose, and I'll show you why. So the reason this first method is more accurate is because we're going to export an EDL of shots already delivered. The principle behind this is that the vendor has delivered us these shots before, and the time code is going to be the same. So effectively, I'm going to export an EDL of this shot. I'm going to take the time code of its use, and I'm going to swap it out with the name of the incoming version of the shot. And as long as the vendor has maintained their time code and didn't change it, everything should line back up, which means I can cut all these shots in very quickly. And to make that apparent, the new versions are going to be yellow. The old versions are going to be orange. Now, in the case of these shots that don't have a previous version, we're going to have to find another method, and I'll show you how we'll do that. So in order to do this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need an EDL, and we're going to need a subcap list. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm going to go to List Tool. And I made a preset here that I call Visual Effects Import Collapsed. And the important thing here is there's this option here, Merge Events on Selected Video Tracks to One Track. The reason that's important is for anyone who's VFX edited, I'm sure you've seen that you don't always have your visual effects on one track. You might have a two layer comp here that your editor has done and so the visual effects sits on maybe track three. Maybe you have stacked versions of visual effects and what this allows you to do is you can kick out an EDL of these four tracks and it'll only give you the topmost track. In this case, that's gonna be the current visual effect and that's gonna help us out. So I'm going to drag this sequence in. Here is our sequence with visual effects. And I want to tell the Avid, I want you to give me tracks one to four, because track five is my titles. I don't want that. Tracks one to four, and I'm going to enable that merge events on selected video tracks to one track. So I'm going to hit preview, and it's going to bark at me that's okay. I'm going to export this and the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to export my subcap list and again this will be important later and I'll explain. So I'm just going to call this subcap list. That's fine. And the last thing I need is I need to export a tab delimited of my incoming shots because I need to give FileMaker a list of what I'm about to cut in. The important things here are you include the name, start timecode, end timecode, and source file name. This is going to be our list of shots that we are going to give FileMaker to cut in our shots. So I'm going to import that EDL. That's step one. And you can see this time around, with the exception of these first eight or ten shots, these are comps. These were delivered from the vendor. So I am going to import my VFX cut-in list. And I'm going to select my incoming. And it's going to bring up the import window so I can make sure the name is lining up, start and start, and an end source file. These are all the fields I need to make a match. And I'm going to go back to my EDL importer and I'm going to go to export EDL cut-in. I'm going to set that to my folder where I'm exporting everything. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my main bin here. I'm going to go to import EDL and here's the EDL. It's going to have my sequence name, 
underscore cut in so I know exactly what I'm cutting in here. Now I'm going to hit open. It's going to ask me my frame rate. Now I'm working at 23,976, but there is no option for that. So I'm going to set this to 24. Here's another important thing. I'm working at 23,976, but I'm working at 23,976, 1080. It is important that you actually denote that and don't call it 23,976 NTSC, or it's going to interpret the time code a little differently. So 1080. And I don't map audio, so I'm going to turn that off. And it's going to ask me what bin. I'm going to put it here in the current bin. And I have this sequence with offline clips. Now that doesn't look that helpful, but bear with me. I'm going to select my incoming. I'm going to select all clips in it. And I'm going to go back to this bin. I'm going to right click, relink, managed media. And by default, it's going to take us to this media on drive. But I actually want to go to selected items in all open bins. I'm going to change the default source file ID to tape name or source file name. I'm going to uncheck match case when comparing source names. And I'm going to uncheck this create new sequence because I can create this new EDL if I need. I'm not worried about it overriding this. So I'm going to hit OK. And look at that. Everything came online. This sequence is ready to be cut in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this into my source. And here's my visual effects sequence. And so I know every shot that I have a visual effect for should cut in starting on this clip. So I'm going to set my endpoint. I'm going to gang this and you can see we'll just go. Everything lines up. Just doing a cursory check here. Everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to use this bin view. No sound. I like to do that just to make sure I'm not accidentally overcutting sound on a lower track. Again, map this to the top. And I have just cut in every single shot here. Now again, you have to double check these because it's entirely possible maybe your vendor changed time code, maybe something went wrong. But I've saved all of the time of finding the shot in the timeline and cutting it in. And for example, if your editor has trimmed the shot or extended the shot, as long as you're using time code based on something that the vendors delivered, it's going to work. So you don't have to worry about the lengths being different. If your editor has, say, taken a shot and bisected it, making a cutback, this will account for that because, again, it's using the, the comps that are already in the timeline. But you have one issue. Well, you can't cut in shots that you don't have shots already for. Well, there's a way around that because a subcap gives you a time code in and a time code out when you export that list. So all you need to know is what shots do you want. Now, it's worth noting I included a feature. So the list compares the clips in the timeline to my incoming list. But any shot that is not about to be cut in, it's going to export this text file. And the text file is your sequence, and it's called not cut in. That way, if there's anything not cut in, you don't have to be guessing what did and didn't get cut in. But we can take this one step further. I'm going to take this list of shots, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to FileMaker Pro. So I'm going to import our subcap list because that's going to give me the time code in and the time code out of every visual effect in the sequence. Now, from this section, I'm going to go to Tools and I'm going to go to Export Subcap Cut in EDL. And it's going to open this window, which is going to ask us a few questions. The first is Do you want to cut in a specific list of shots. If you leave this blank, it will cut in every single shot in your subcap list. But in this case, we've already cut in most of our shots from the EDL. So I'll paste in this list. These are the only shots I want to cut in. Head frames to cut in. This defaults to nine because typically your first frame is your slate followed by eight frames of handles. Being that I prepared these comps for this demonstration, this is actually eight in this case. And the point of this is, you can change this in case your vendor gives you something different. Lastly, set the path where you want to export this and just click this field to change it. I'm going to set this to the EDL importer demo section and I'm going to hit and there's lastly there's a warning here. This script's going to create an EDL of all shots in the list starting eight frames in. 
please check them carefully. The point of this is you're setting your cut in on each of your visual effects, but you are operating on an assumption that that is the starting frame. You really want to check these. So I'm going to hit OK. And it creates an EDL here called VFX from subcaps cut in. And that's intentional. I just want you to be very clear where these are coming from. So we're going to do the same process we did before. Back in the Avid, I'm going to input EDL VFX from subcaps cut in. 24 frames. I'm going to set that to 1080. Don't map. OK. And once again, I have a shorter list of shots. They're all offline. I'm going to select everything here. And I'm going to relink these. Source file name. This is all good. And everything came online. And what I like to do in the case of these shots is I actually like to draw a distinction between shots that were cut in from a subcap versus shots that were cut in from an EDL. Because again, I can trust the EDL quite a bit more than I can trust the subcap. So by cutting this onto a higher track before I hand this off to my editor, I know before I give it to my editor, I'm going to give this a much greater level of scrutiny. Now, of course, I know this is good because I prepared this demo for you, but this is one way you can expedite cutting in shots. We've just cut in 215 shots in a matter of minutes. Again, you always want to check these, and the way I usually do it is I will gang my sequence, my cutting in sequence, and then I'll move the monitor down to my plate below so I can just move through this really quickly and go shot by shot and see does it line up? Does it line up? Good. And of course, if you're dealing with shots that have animated characters that you have CG, then you have a little bit more scrutiny because you have to make sure that things that aren't in the plate are lining up. But we've just cut in 215 shots in minutes. That is cutting in shots with the EDL importer, and I'll see you in the next demo.